Yes, so my name is Ingrid Bjornsson and uh, I'm uh, with the School of Computer Science and CADIA. Uh, I'm going to talk about general game playing systems. Uh, we are running a little bit behind schedule, so I'll try to keep this not too long. Uh, so, games have played a central role in AI research from the inception of the field uh, over half a century ago. And even before the first computers existed, there were people playing, uh, uh, building game playing programs. Like Alan Turing derived the first chess playing algorithm. He didn't have a computer to run it on, so he hand simulated. The first computer chess game was a hand simulation where Turing was playing against someone else, and the, the script of the game exists. Uh, Arthur Samuel, uh, that actually Dion mentioned, uh, he did his work in reinforcement learning using checkers. Uh, at this time, uh, like he was doing machine learning, even before the term machine learning existed. And IBM at this time was very skeptic, but very afraid that it would be made public that the computers could learn. So they actually thought it would hurt, would hurt their sales. So his experiments were justified that he was doing just large system tests when he was running his experiments on the, on the IBM machines and so on. And probably the, the most famous milestone was uh, when Deep Blue chess playing program of IBM also actually did feed the best chess player in the world, Gary Kasparov. Uh, so games, why have they been, they been so important for AI research? We could, like, a, a simple view is basically this is our laboratory. Like, we can, just as when you're studying, like, chemistry or something else, you have a laboratory where you can control external uh, uh, things like temperature and so on. Here we have uh, uh, something that has very simple rules, but you need a complex strategy to, to play well. Uh, so we can concentrate on just the, the part of the intelligence that we are interested in. Uh, so the, I mentioned this milestone. So when the field of AI was formally established in 1956, they had um, and and also like uh, Turing's work a little bit earlier. He was he was he died a little bit before that, but he was also he Alan Turing already had thought about uh, how we would try to make intelligent machines and. They kind of uh, mentioned that chess would be one possibility. Let's start with a simple problem, like teaching computers to play chess. People actually go into the real world and try to attack some really, really challenging problems there. And milestone, 10 years, and 10 years passed. And in 58, uh, Herb Simon and Alan Newell had this famous prediction that it would be a 10 years. Uh, they both are actually Nobel Prize winners. And um, they had the prediction of 10 years, and then we had another prediction of 10 years. And the funny thing is, the humans never learned. They kept these 10 years predictions all the way until 1997, when, when this finally happened. And uh, so uh, there's a documentary film out about this Casper versus uh, Deep Blue match. Uh, uh, they built a computer specifically for playing chess. So the hardware in the computer was chess playing hardware. You didn't have arithmetic unit, you had a rope moving unit in the hardware. And they had a lot of those special, special purpose uh, CPUs, chess playing units. Uh, and um, and the, the, the computer were analyzing uh, millions and millions of positions per second. A human probably analyzes between 200 and 300 positions when making a move like a strong, strong grandmaster. And they had uh, a software and they had a team of five, six, seven people, depending how you count. They had uh, like a five scientists and then they had three grand or four grandmasters actually helping them, uh, getting the knowledge into the program, handcrafted a uh, evaluation function that had, had over 2,000 chess related features in it. And it was uh, mostly hand tuned. There was some automated tuning going on. And so there was some criticism about this. So is this engineering or is this AI? And uh, maybe the most, one of the most famous criticism came from John McCarthy, who was a, a founding, one of the founding fathers of AI. And he basically said that a computer chess has developed much as geneticists might have if they would have concentrated their effort on breeding, raising fruit flies 
we would have some science, but mainly very fast fruit flies. So, um, and, and why was that? Because they were so occupied with the goal of building a really, really strong chess program, they kind of uh, forgot why they were using chess as a, a test bed for the research. That was kind of the, uh, the overall skepticism. Of course, there came a, 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 a many interesting things out of this, but we could maybe have done better. And so we really want to build systems that are capable of learning. They're able to be put into situations that they haven't exactly seen uh, before, and they can basically adapt or transfer knowledge from something similar they know to the new system, and we want them to act uh, really autonomously. Like They should be able to learn, and we want to minimize, minimize the human supervision and intervention. Uh, and this is how China game playing was born. Try to meet, try to meet this skepticism. And so, general game playing systems are game playing systems that are capable of playing many different games, even games that they may never have seen before. And the way this works, there's a, 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 a server, and they have a, a description of, of games. You can think of these descriptions as these are the rules of the game. Like I teach you how the piece is moving chess. That would be the rules of the game and what the goal is. But then the system, the general gameplay system itself will be supplied with the rules. I'll teach it basically how the pieces move in chess. But the system itself may, then must try to figure out or learn over time uh, what does it take to play this game well? What kind of strategy should I use to play this game? Uh, and then the uh, game starts, and this is might be the first time it sees this game, first time it sees chess, so there's no way there could be a team of engineers here trying to build knowledge about the game into the, the software because they don't know beforehand what the game is. So it sends a description of the game, basically teaches the system how to move the pieces, and the system has then to learn a, a complex strategy of how to play this game, and so on. So, um, so now the onus is on the system itself to, to learn. It's not a team of engineers that's going to build the knowledge into the system. Uh, and uh, these rules, the game rules, are is a well-defined language called GGL that we used to describe it. It's a logic-based prologue-like language. And uh, we can play a wide variety, variety of games. Uh, they can be single play game like a puzzle, two play games, could multiplayer games. We can be have a uh, adversary or we can have uh, a collaborative goals in the game. Uh, there are some limitations like they have to be deterministic games, uh, meaning there's no chance elements like rolling a dice. You cannot currently handle that. And these are all perfect information games, meaning that both players, they know the state of the game. So that would exclude most card games where I only see my hand and the opponent, op same is true for the opponents. But nonetheless, we can play a, a, a various type of games that can be turn-taking, simultaneous moves. And we've been playing like, typically these are some kind of board games, it's just because it's easy to visualize. It's more fun to watch a game that you can visualize. But we could play very abstract games. We have played like uh, a Pac-Man-like games, uh, like a turn-based Pac-Man-like games. We have played Tetris-like games, all kinds of puzzles and so on. Uh, and uh, this research was initiated by a, a research group at Stanford University and exactly tried to meet this uh, criticism on the and the uh, previous approaches. And it's now a well-established research community, a lot of active research going on in many universities worldwide. And there's an international competition where it's been competed in uh, this system each year to actually measure progress. And we have an agent here uh, called Caria Player, that was developed here. And there's a, a, a team of people behind it. I'm the principal investigator, Hilmar Finson, my PhD student, who is graduating next week, defending his thesis. He's still responsible for most of the work, but there are others as well. And it's very much still active, ongoing work. The system is too complex to discuss it in any details here, but. Um, uh, kind of the main interesting part is in this is like uh, 
the way that we think ahead. We use a simulation-based approach, and we, one way to describe it is, uh, like, so instead, like, when we are playing a single game, of course, like, uh, we try to figure some things out about the game in the start, but even when the game is going on, basically the system is playing thousands of games in the background. While it's thinking about one move, it's playing lots of complete games. It's using simulations to play out all kinds of scenarios, and then it's, while it's doing that, it, it's called kind of Monte Carlo simulations, it, it, but then it's, it, the extension here is what is called like a, the tree search component of it. Uh, gradually, when we are doing that, we start to build up a game tree that allows us to uh, uh, actually reason about the game. If we were using pure Monte Carlo simulations, uh, it would be shown that we would not converge on the right value. But using these uh, extended techniques, actually, we are able to come up with uh, 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 very uh, actually informed decisions. And it's, it's a little bit strange when you think about it. Like initially, these simulations are really dummy. You can think about it. There are a thousand monkeys playing chess. And let's say they're choosing between two moves and you have a thousand monkeys playing out possible scenarios can happen when you do move A and there are a thousand monkeys playing out simulations uh, when you do uh, game B. Neither of them really knows how to play chess except they know the rules of the chess but they have no strategy. And somehow based on this random play we are able to come up with uh, intelligent decisions. Uh, and this has to do with uh, the system learns actually how to take the simulations and make them more intelligent. So this is the what we are learning. Over time, we actually learn to play better and better simulations. Yeah. It's a little bit like if you've seen the War Games movie. I think it's, uh, some people in the audience have seen that. Do you remember that movie uh, when there was, uh, in the Cold War, there was uh, imminent like uh, a nuclear threat? And they taught basically the computer to, they had to play tic-tac-toe to learn that there is really no winning in the situation. So it's, it's a little bit like that. <laughs> uh, and um, so we've been, our player, and this actually, we were the first team actually to introduce this technology to the general game playing. And when we came and we started to play in, in 2007, we were the only team, like we introduced this technology to the field. Nowadays, almost every program is using this technology. Yeah. So, yeah, we've been competing. Uh, th the competition is typically held at the largest AI conferences, uh, and we've been quite successful there. Uh, we won the first two years, uh, while everyone else was catching on up on the same technology. Of course, we publish everything we do, and no secrets. It's a very open research community, and we came very, very close to, to winning last year. We were the only team that came undefeated into the finals, and uh, unfortunately, we, we lost there against uh, a, a Google-based team. Yeah. Uh, but nonetheless, we've been one of the most successful general game playing agents. And, we used to, uh, and I'm showing you a picture here. This is one of the taken from one of the competitions, and I'm just doing it because I want to show you this guy. Does anyone recognize this guy? Now, this is John McCarthy. <laughs> the guy was criticizing. He actually came and checked us out. <laughs> uh, uh, he just passed away recently. Mm. But he lived, lived to see Jenna Game Playing. Oh. Uh, anyways, uh, Jenna Game Playing, this is a very important research direction. Uh, and it's really helping us moving towards having more intelligent systems. So we are still working in a, a well-defined domain where we, and it's very important, we can really evaluate what we are doing. It's, it's, it allows us to evaluate our progress, but we are still avoiding the pitfalls of being uh, too problem specific, that we lose sight of that we are trying to build like, a, you could say, a general intelligence based systems. Uh, and Reykjavik University, we are uh, at the forefront of the university in the forefront of this research. Uh, there are many, many, many interesting research questions in here uh, and answered. Uh, how to uh, transfer knowledge from one game I learned to another one. When I learned something, uh, how can I evaluate in real time how good the, the thing is that I'm learning? It's kind of a meta reasoning. I'm reasoning about the knowledge that I have and so on. So the many opportunities for interested uh, uh, potential graduate students uh, uh, to come and, and work with us on this. 
And yeah, so that concludes my, my uh, talk. I'm going to use the opportunity to advertise uh, a PhD event that's taking place this Monday in my venture. And he is really going into the details of how Cardia Play works. So uh, if you want to know more, please come. And, and there's an open part to his event. So, then on Monday. Thank you.